and welcome to Plow and Potato. I'm Sean Bonet. Hi, I'm Joffrey Swaked. Let them eat cake. <laughs> we're going to have our cake and we're going to eat it too. Look at that. <laughs> oh, no. Dang it. <laughs> First, <laughs> see, I feel like I don't have this problem with anybody else but you. I go in for the drive and I have to like break it up. We're going to be talking about cake today and Joffrey and I both had a cake quote so that means we're, we're ready. <laughs> that means we're ready. We've studied. Can I have a quick aside to talk about high fives? Yes. Okay. You may. I'm larger than you, which actually means that you need to be uh, the active one, the pursuer, the conqueror. I will be feminine to your masculine. I will be the platform. And I yes. can see you. That's how it has to be. The smaller guy, the, so. the shorter guy always has to be the one who goes for it. Yeah. So I will be stable and you... Yes. Well, no, that's great, but I, I'm coming in 100 miles per hour. You're nowhere to be found. I'm going like, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, like a... we have different ideas of what's awesome. <laughs> that, actually, that's an issue. <laughs> but we actually, I think, disagree on this topic a little bit. Mm. We're talking about cake, and Joffrey doesn't like cake. Oh, you just, man, I was hoping to kind of obscure that till the end of the show. <laughs> but yeah, generally, you could say open. I don't like cake. Yeah, I like wet cakes drenched in booze or cream or juice i like trifles i don't like the cakes that, I, that usually are put before me you know what i do like is fruit cake like dense i like dense cakes i like torts uh -huh. who doesn't like a tort who doesn't like all the words that are associated with cake like <laughs> yeah you're right what would you say it's, Wet, it's a hard thing to drenched, be grumpy about moist <laughs> Moist Juice. is an all-time favorite word. Juice. Okay. So we're going to talk about the philosophy of cake, the very cakeness of cake. The very cakeness of cake. Now, I am also not the biggest fan of cake, but I mentioned to you before the show, I don't like the idea of cake, but then I'm reminded of all these great cakes that are out there, and then I like cake again. So here's something that I do like that. That's a beautiful thought. Thank you. That there would be something where, because where, actually off camera, before we started the show, you were talking about what a grump you've been this week. I have been a grump. And I myself have a tendency Always towards a grump. grumpiness. <laughs> so, uh, you know, here you are just being a grump, but then cake takes that away because you remember times when you weren't a grump That's and right. you were having cake. Yeah. But I do, I do have to wonder on behalf of our beloved audience, beloved. why would they listen to two non-cake lovers about love for cake? Well... I have like cake, so that there's that. I, it's not just dead not like cake, but we understand the philosophy of cake. Okay. We understand the point and purpose of cake, and we like the idea of cake. We understand that it though, might be a shortcoming of ours that we don't that's like right. cake. Cake is beautifully incarnational, and we are all for that. So here's the problem that cake tries to address, the lack of frivolity. <laughs> frivolity. <laughs> Yes, the lack hey. of frivolity. Okay. Tell me more about that. Mm. All right. Well, frivolity is is usually a negative word. Right. And I'm actually okay with that. But I want us to really, I want to, to, to force the audience to think about the good that is native to being unserious. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's an aspect of Christian joy where we embrace the fact that we are pilgrims. We embrace the fact that we are made to die. We embrace the fact that we can cast our lives away knowing that it means something. We're not trying to hang on for dear life to everything. We can do things that appear to be of no consequence. We can do things that are simply gestures. I can throw my life away upon the battlefield and it can be beautiful because we're Christians. Yeah, And so we can be frivolous. We can do things that are not utilitarian. We can rejoice in things that are just straight up fun. Let's be frivolous. Let's have some cake. We don't have to have pumpernickel rye bread all the time. That's right. And some of the things that are included uh, with the idea of cake, present with cake, is joy, celebration, and beauty. And yeah. there's something fleeting about all those things. Because let's work backwards. Beauty. We're, we're told, especially when we're considering women, that beauty has a vanity to it. It's, uh -huh. it's vapor. It's this smoke right here. And even celebration. It's, it's for a short period. 
And then joy itself is something that's like a slippery fish. And so all these things have a, a temporary quality to them. And not only is cake temporary in its existence, of course, like any uh -huh. food, but cake is also like, you, you don't eat a lot of cake, right? Right. You have a small portion of cake. If you eat too much cake, you'll feel sick. Yeah. Right. So it's already something that's supposed to be small in your life, but that's it's right. beautiful in your life. Yet so many people have this idea that if they consume any cake, yeah. that they're committing a sin. Right. Those food sinnies out there who don't enjoy the cookies, the cakes, the pies, the candies of life. Which has nothing to do with whether eating too much cake is bad for you. Right. Eating too much bread is bad for you. Eating too much steak is bad for you. Eating too much zucchini is bad for you. That's right. Now, what too much is wildly changes. And they vary. Yeah, they're yeah. different percentages. You hit too much cake very early. Yes. But cake is good. Ooh, I kind of like that. Almost. We, I, I feel like yeah. we came to each other. is very egalitarian. Yeah. Now, here's what cake is. Mm. Cake is not bread, and cake is not a vice. We've already gone on about the idea that it's not a vice. Let's talk about how it's not a bread. Okay. I, I like the idea of connecting it to bread. Like, cake is sweet. Cake is made from grain, right? Yeah. Cake is sweet and decorated bread. But you disagree, and I'm coming around to your opinion on it. Why hmm. would you not lead with the idea that cake is bread? Well, bread is the staff of life. Dang. Okay, okay. We're almost there, dude. That I, was yeah, good. I, I felt it. Uh, because I remained passive that time. I stayed disciplined. Yep. And I was wanting to be passive, but I felt your gravitas. <laughs> dude. I, I became your moon. Look, guys, it's happening. The magic is finally happening. We're kind of moon. All right, so, so here... So, Bread is the staff of life. Bread is one of my favorite words. Quotidian. Bread is every day. Nice. And so bread is very appropriate for the feast which binds us together in the Holy Spirit. We have wine. We have bread. Wine and bread are for every day. That's what gets us through Tuesday as well as Sunday. Cake is brief. Cake is a holiday. Cake is special. Cake is not bread. It may have some of the same ingredients, mm. but it's not going to be the staff of life. It's not going to be the thing that holds me up every day. It's going to be that special moment. And you've made some really good contrast to help our audience see that. Grape juice is not wine. Mm -hmm. Grape jelly is not wine. Though there be similarity in color and briefly in flavor, yeah. they're fundamentally different. Different things, yeah. They're, they have a, an appearance and ilk that they seem to share, but when you compare the, the point and purpose of bread yeah. and then cake, you, you see that a lot more clearly. And it's full of these, these wonderful ingredients. So there is grain, there's eggs, butter, sugar, salt, and fat. Lots, lots of fat. Lots of fat. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> a, as someone who appreciates culinary theology, there, there's something to be said about the very ingredients present yes. in cake. So we've already touched on grain, but eggs, that's a big part of the cake experience too. What, when you think about eggs, what do you, what comes to mind? <laughs> well, obviously, you know, we, we could go off of this Easter and Easter bunny and fertility thing, and that's a part of it. But honestly, it's protein. Fertility, yeah. It's protein, right? Like it's, you know, there's, there is, despite the frivolity of cake, there is something meaty there. Between the eggs and the fat, you know, we are talking about real food. Right. It's celebratory food. It's special food. Uh, there's a whole lot of sugar in it. Yeah. But hey, eggs, cream. So you're saying fat. eggs ground it. Eggs yes, ground absolutely. It as a food. It's not just not food. That's, that's really uh, brilliant. And then the, the butter and the sugar. Yeah. The, the rich ingredients. The ingredients that make and define so much of our food. But if they were to overwhelm it, if we were just to commit to right. all butter, all sugar, then it becomes gross. And, and we've all eaten cakes that have been overwhelmed by sugar, particularly right. like in the icing. The icing is where that vice can manifest That's itself. why people hate cake. My wife doesn't like cake. And the reason, she says, I think two reasons. One, it's really dry, so you would, you know, vibe with that. And the other is that the icing is just too much. And it's usually gross. <laughs> <laughs> so it has to be handled carefully. But actually, I, I would want love icing that's the same thickness of my slice of cake. That's exactly right. Well, I, I would like actually though to take this. This is the perfect moment to go on an excursion. I would like to communicate to you and to our audience that it is such a blessing 
that today, in the year of our Lord, 2021, we can all buy refined sugar. Yeah. Think about the Christians who not only had to deal with the gory lion's mane and be thrown into the Colosseum and hide in the catacombs, they didn't have refined sugar. <laughs> Gas. <laughs> Gas. <laughs> so, I mean, the world has been blessed to the point now where we have universal indoor plumbing in this country and we can all buy refined sugar from the Caribbean. It's That's absolutely oh. incredible. Whether you put it in your coffee or whether you make cakes, however it is you use refined sugar, what a blessing from the Lord. Excursion over. If that's not post mill, I don't know what is. <laughs> Dude, yes. If, if you are on the fence about your eschatology, here is your argument. That post mill. And when we when we when we get to heaven, we'll be running up to St. Paul and saying, dude, dude, guess what you missed? <laughs> <laughs> There's this thing called cake, and it has refined cane sugar in it. You don't even know what sugar cane is. And he's going to just unleash all kinds of blessings from heaven. So the the theology of dessert is, is a delightful one, that one that comes with cake. See, when you think about cake, it works up all of these images. So I, I think of aroma. Mm. Like, isn't that a delightful idea? Aroma, warm, women, wives, mothers, <laughs> daughters, in the kitchen, mm. baking. What a delightful image. You know, it's so funny how the food industry reflects how God made the world, even when it tries not to. Yes. You know, and in particular, I'm thinking of of pastry chefs. Of I like, want to see a woman know. in an apron. That's going to persuade me to buy your crumpet. <laughs> but that is actually what happens in the food industry. You know, most of the brilliant celebrity chefs like in the in the front of the house or in the main kitchen are men. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of renowned yes. pastry chefs Go, say are it. women. Yes. Isn't that... <laughs> it's like they can't even be helped. That's just like speaking exactly to the bread conversation. Men are that... They're that strong stability leading the day in the day out. And the women are the beautiful decorations. They're, they're the brief celebratory things. And really? Life. Yeah. I don't know if I'd go with that. What if, what if the women are the keepers of the hearth? They're the stability. They're the anchors around which we orbit, and we go out from them, and we go do things for them. No, you're right. The, there's, there's a, there's a, a See, I think contrast. There's a breaking apart because that is right. You know, when I when I went to get excited and and spill it out, you hear the the contradictions from what is good theology and mm. view, but there is something that's being said about. The men are making the steaks and the women yes. are making the cupcakes. I what think, is that? I think what you were focusing on was the passing nature of light and fluffy sugar. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Fluffiness is more feminine than masculine. But, but you started this whole p portion of the podcast by talking about comfort things. Yes. And that's why it's feminine. Yes. Women want to you comfort go. you. Okay. That's why they bake cookies. Who, kids love to eat cookies more than potatoes. <laughs> and it's not just because they're sweet. It's because they're they are a consoling food. Right. Mama's got you. Yeah. Have a cookie. And and with desserts, specifically cake, there's something about that that's the the cherry of community. When you have a meal, whoa, with whoa stop, stop. Okay. The cherry of community. <laughs> Is that what you're about to unpack? Because I don't want that phrase to go by uncommented. I love it. So What's the it. cherry of community, dude? The, the cherry of community is dessert. Okay. It, it's the, the it's like the cherry on top? Yeah, or? that's right. Because think about this. You share a table with somebody. And then you move to the living room. Okay. And you receive a dessert. Mm. That's the cherry of the community. You have such an incredible time. And then there's dessert? Are you kidding me? It's the cherry of community. God's mercy never ends. Amen. What? There's dessert? Read Lamentations. Yeah. <laughs> so there's there's an idea of cake. There's this, there's the theology. There's aroma, these images. But there's like a greater um, celebration. There's a greater party gathering element that comes with it that you like to highlight. The F words. <laughs> <laughs> Festal and ferial. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if you if you read a very famous, you know, food theologian, if you will, 
<laughs> is Francis Farr Capon, who has a name that's a food. But yeah, so he talks about festal and ferial a lot in, in his theology. So we're talking about the, the feasting and we're talking about weekday eating. And, you know, it's c cake belongs in both. Cake mm -hmm. belongs at feasts and cake be it belongs there when you're trying to when you want to elevate. Right. So you're yeah. you're elevating a snow day. You you're go. elevating a Tuesday. Here's a bit of mama's cake. That's brilliant. So, I mean, cakes can can stand in for you know, like it can be a, an integral part of everything that's huge. Right. Yes. Wedding showers, baby showers, weddings themselves, anniversaries. Yeah. Like cake is always there. Now, you and I are the sort who are going to try to make sure a keg is always there. Amen. That some meat is always there. Yes. But let's be real. Cake is also always there yeah. with all of that sugar and all of that fat. And it ought to be. It belongs. It ought to be. And it, and it speaks to that our gatherings and our celebrations are refined there's been cultivation to them you've already talked about the glory uh, of refined sugar how it's not always been here well the very nature of having something like a german i'm trying to think of a cake you don't despise do you like cheesecake i love cheesecake when you think about cheesecake you need that good white refined sugar in there. oh yeah and the very fact that we're able to make this dish says something about where our culture is at to a degree it can yeah. it can be a piece of evidence to for, at least for the potential this. right yeah. the, everything that we have at hand we christians have no excuse yeah right and we we look right now at the battlefield and we see our front lines receding we see we see our comrades in retreat everywhere we see people rallying around you know, different leaders and at different hills. Mm -hmm. And we are in retreat right. on this side of the battlefield, at least. Well, we have, we have, it's not for lack of resources. It's not for lack of blessing. That's right. Right? The, 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 we have the Holy Spirit. And besides the Holy Spirit, we have refined sugar. Like, you know, <laughs> we could have done this. We blew it. Well, here's the thing. It's, um, there, there's retreat. But women, you have a weapon. And it's cake. Go bake a cake. Because not only with it, Will you do something incredible for the gatherings? But you can also make money off of cakes. You can sell cakes. You can you can teach, conquer the world with cakes. You can teach other people to make cakes. And when you teach more, you'll conquer the world because yeah. you have an army. And cakes are theological. Like there's, I mean, let's not even get into how many cake shops have been attacked by the enemy. Mm -hmm. We'll just leave that off to the side. If Christian women are making cakes, selling cakes, teaching cakes, then they are actually carrying They're packages cakes. of blessings somewhere. They're cakes, for goodness sakes. <laughs> but really, these, these are weapons of conquest. And I would say that cake is stronger than barbecue in that sense. Mm. Uh, because, you know, I mean, families gather around barbecue. Barbecue is, is a cultural phenomenon in, in many parts of the United States and in, in much of the world. It, it is a strong weapon. It's a strong weapon for community. It's a strong weapon for showing love. But nothing compares to the tenderness and personalized mm. concern that a cake shows. Yeah. You know, when, when, when someone invites you to eat a steak with them or someone brings you some of the bacon they cured, like you feel good and manly and like oh, I'm yeah. friends with this dude. You don't bring bacon when someone's sick. You bring cake. Dang. Just saying. All right. Teacher Sean Q really... Beautiful music right now to lead us in. Now, that's cake in action. Mm. That is cake coming to serve people in the family. So in the home, some of the areas that we could use cake is when somebody is not well or somebody is very well. Like what a diverse yeah. weapon and tool we have there for, for birthday and for passing. That's where we can see cake in action in the home. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we, we ought to be searching for more opportunities to celebrate in our homes mm -hmm. anyway, right? Uh, and if, if you are a fuddy-duddy, repent. Look to, look to party. And in your family, the universal tool of party is going to be cake. In your family, it's not beer. 
right? Mm -hmm. You may always have a beer yeah. in, in, while you're partying. The wife may always have a glass of wine, yeah. but what everybody is, is going to unite around is cake. And as we talk about cake in action, in every one of these environments, because we're gonna talk about work, and uh, in every one of these environments, one of the key aspects of cake is that a cake is one thing, mm. right? It's one loaf, if you will. Oh, bread. But we, we take a piece of cake, and our little sister takes a piece of cake, and we both eat from the same cake. That's a vital part of it. That's brilliant. And it's so important to have cake be that central factor than, say, beer, because it's so much better to throw cake at people than beer. Uh -huh. Okay, I just want to make that actual. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, you're, you're asking us to imagine physically <laughs> yeah, a cake in the right. air you know, splatting if, into if our faces. If a family fight breaks out, <laughs> okay. I just wanted to leave that. You're right. I wanted to present better that as if I was fights. saying something really important. No, the cake is one, and so that's why even when you bring it to a work setting for an office party or even for someone's departing from yeah. the, the community, it's it's saying something about who you guys are collective. We are one and we are all taking parts. It's like often we talk about someone being with us in spirit or parts of us being with one another. Well, if you have a cake uh, in a work environment, you're saying we're coming together, we're doing some sort of kingdom activity here and we celebrate with this delicacy that is brief and for a moment that is showing unity. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what that's what employees need in order to be successful in their business. Yeah. We also, well, yeah, go ahead. We, well, we also have church. We also have cake in church. Not as common, I would say, but not even in the worship service, but as a church. Yes. We have cake. Well, you know, so often, you know, it, it, one of the things that will always be present at a church lunch, church yeah. dinner, or whatever, is going to be cake. There's going to be coleslaw, mm -hmm. there's going to be casserole, and there will always be cake. And the thing everyone is excited about is the cake. Yeah. You know? I mean, that's what we're, we're, we're getting through the coleslaw, which may be delicious, yeah. but we, we know we have to eat the coleslaw first, even when we're 43. Yeah. So then we can eat the cake. <laughs> and, and the final charge is very related to that. The cake can't suck. <laughs> because if the cake sucks, what you a let down. everything. Wow, dude, you're actually thinking of actual cakes that have sucked and you're sad right now. Oh, <laughs> I've been to events where the cake is presented and there's high anticipation for the cake. And you're like, what in tarnation is this? Oh, what kind of crappy grocery store cake is just before me? I'm eating cardboard with a layer of cream sugar. Mm. No. You know what we need to do? We need to get Valerie to get you some cake. And in fact, I would like to dedicate this episode to Valerie. Holy smokes. Is she a cakeist? Man, is she. She is a maven, a mistress, a marvel of cakery. Now, this is very important. This is someone who's in our church. Where, under what circumstances, do you have cake with her? I've never actually eaten her cakes. Mm -hmm. I've seen many, many pictures of her oh. cakes. Because from before I even moved here. But, you know, then the comments raving about them. But visually, they're beautiful. They're expressions of artistry. You know, the icings and the and the sculptures that are on yeah. them. Cakes can carry messages. That's right. This is the shapes of them. Uh, yeah, she's an incredible woman. And if she gave us a cake, we wouldn't mind. No, we wouldn't. And in fact, we might even eat it on air mm. and give testimony <laughs> before the congregation. Shameless. That's what we are. Now, we may be shameless, but we know that cake is important. And we know that thinking about cake is important. Letting it be a component of the culture. The things that cake means and the things that cake do. And it can't suck. Don't <laughs> suck when you make cake. Don't make cake that sucks. You just had to add that. Huh? It's like we had all this positive <laughs> stuff. And they were like, but, but ladies, please, whatever you do, don't suck. They don't suck. <laughs> ladies, we, we, ha we have the best bakeresses in the land. We love women a lot. So much so. That <laughs> You're only saying that because you like cake. That's why. Well, it goes back to the uh, side of fries that you're going to see later this week. It's about a man looking for a woman because his home is dirty and his food sucks. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, ladies. You're beautiful. And thank you, Lord, for cake. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure for us to get together and, and share our thoughts and conversations and culture with you. So this week. Do we have it? Oh, no. Let your name say it all this week. <laughs>